Hello, everybody. Welcome to the policy committee meeting. It's 5:01 p.m. I'm sorry. Curriculum and instruction. Welcome to the curriculum and instruction committee meeting. We don't have any members of the public, but if we can just go around the table and everybody uh, could say who's here, we'll start with Mrs. Bites. So Mrs. Bites. <laughs> Rich Martino. Mary Beth Torsha. Connor Kurtz. Mary Beth Kiesel. Scott Matt. Megan Weber. All right. We don't have any members of the public here. The meeting's advertised to go on for two hours. If we finish up before that, by all means, we will conclude. Um, this will be pretty informal, uh, maybe even more so than usual. Uh, we were going to start with an item that's not on the agenda, but Mr. Matt would like to give a presentation of the paperless report cards. All right. So if you'd like to have the floor. Yeah, so now that we're through the first quarter, uh, we didn't really want to touch with the first quarter. We went with our normal process of printing the report cards for all the students. Uh, one of the features we gained um, as a result of an upgrade this summer to our student information system is the ability to make student report cards available online. Uh, it's the exact same template that we're currently printing out, just available as a PDF. Um, and really why we're looking at it, number one, um, with Home Access Center, which is the great book that students can access 24-7, same with parents. Um, the necessity of a paper report card is really diminishing. Uh, students can follow their grades throughout the quarter. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's any big surprise anymore what that final quarter grade is going to be on the paper copy. Uh, we're spending a decent amount of time printing them, sorting them, distributing them. Uh, and, you know, it's, a, it's an added expense that just like in our personal lives, bills are going online 24-7. We might as well look at making our report cards available. Uh, we gained some security features. Uh, kids can't, number one, they can't hide them anymore. They'll be in Home Access Center where the parents have a uh, login to. Uh, they can't modify them. It's going to be stored on our server. So, uh, you know, some uh, ambitious kids could have previously scanned in the report card, made a change, and printed it back out. Uh, you know, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, you don't have to worry about losing it. It's there whenever. Um, and really, all that will be entailed in distribution now is a simple Connect Ed phone call. Uh, the afternoon that's available, tell the parents it's on. You can log in and access it. Um, and that's it. And that will be a change from our current process of turning kids to homeroom, you know, 10 oh, minutes yeah. each quarter to gain a report card. So you gain back some minimal <coughs> instructional time. Um, but really, it's just it's a simple checkbox for us. It doesn't change. Uh, any drastic procedures on our end other than uh, reducing the amount of time by several hours for the uh, secretarial staff or our department. Uh, and that's really what we're looking at is really an efficiency gain more than anything. Yeah, that's great. I think. Um, so what, we, what we're looking at is I'd like to pilot it. Um, for This is a change of uh, culture for the district, you know, to start going paperless like this. Uh, so I want to pilot it at one level, at the middle school level. Uh, I, I feel that that's a safer area to try rather than at the high school level. Um, we do it with the second quarter. Uh, our plan is to send home a notice with the parent or the uh, students beforehand. Um, we'll include a reminder of what their username and password is to get into Home Access Center. And parents who do not have internet access uh, for now uh, will allow them to return the form and say they would like to still receive a printed copy. Um, and based off of those numbers, we'll evaluate to see what those percentages are. Um, and then really second quarter we'll roll with it. Um, we'll do the Connect Ed phone call with that grade level, have the parents test it out, possibly do a survey afterwards to see what the feedback is, um, and from there, you know, look at uh, whether we want to expand it to additional levels. Uh, this would be, We're only looking, uh, if this goes well, for the secondary level. We would not look at this at the elementary level. There's different uh, pieces that come into play at the elementary level that doesn't make it as attractive at that level right now. Okay. Mr. Mass, did you say you were going to pilot at the middle school, yes. all three grades? I will do one grade level for second quarter. Uh, yeah, since this is something new, that will be about 300 kids. That's a good test base for us. Um, and depending how it goes in third quarter, we could either expand it to another grade level, to the entire building. You know, we'll look second at, quarter this? Because are we in second quarter? We're currently in second quarter, so that will wrap up, so I believe, in January is when this would fall. So we want to send home notice in December. And if this is a success, you'd be doing third quarter? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And you're going to send home, how are you going to do the notices? 
So we have that uh, each year with the third grade students, because that's when they first come into our e-school environment, we have a generic letter, it's a form letter, um, that has their username and password on per guardian. We'll modify that letter uh, basically just with information, you know, going paperless uh, as a reminder. Here's your information. That'll give parents time to log in, find out if there's any issues. We can troubleshoot that's you know enough time for us. I was just thinking if there's something you might be doing for all secondary levels in the second quarter report card, maybe you can include just a brief little thing. Yes. Hey, yep. for next report card, check online. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just a thought. All yes. right, I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead. The, the report card that would be available to them via HAC then, does that have like their class ranking and GPA? Model? It's the exact the report card that we produce? print out. Um, we don't print, uh, rank on, I believe, until fourth quarter. Uh, GPA is on there, but it is, when we print report cards it's in the, the office, thing, yeah, we're access. posting the PDF that we previously were printing out in our building okay. offices. And you're saying it'll be the same template, right? It's the exact same template. Same. Yeah, right now we generate a PDF in-house and print out that PDF. We're eliminating the printing out piece at C. So if the parent preferred, they could print it out at home. Exactly, yeah, 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 there'd be no difference then. Yeah. And one parent with several children would be able to see it, is it one sign-on? Yes, once if we grow it titles? beyond that, yeah. Um, it's yes. similar right now, they can log in and see all their students' grades. Uh, yeah, so a similar process, they'd be able to see all the report cards in one spot. Great. So are you just yes. looking, okay. yeah, what are you looking for from us? Just like a go-ahead or yeah, do you need just a full a, board? Yeah, just really um, making you aware of it. Um, how many schools in our immediate area are, are doing paperless? Uh, Borytown, uh, Governor Mifflin, Brandywine is rolling it out this year. Uh, those are the three schools that you know I've had discussions with just to find out as far as their mm -hmm. environment. Um, I think you're gonna see it more within the next year, year and a half, more switching over as they're coming into you know online grade books and different things like that. Like I said, there's no surprise anymore what that first quarter or second quarter right. grade's going to be if you're following along right. throughout the quarter. I guess I'm okay for getting to try the pilot to see what the reaction is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Personal. Back to my high school days when my girlfriend signed my report. I know, it's kind of changed. <laughs> Before we go back to the 1930s, I think. Uh, <laughs> Times have changed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds good. I think that's. Is there any controversy among the staff about doing this? Is there any reason why anybody, is anybody concerned about it? Um, about our discussion is. obvious concern for people who don't have access. Report cards uh, are printed in our guidance office, so we've discussed it with the guidance secretaries and different things. It's going to reduce their workload. Uh -huh. um, yeah, as far as the staff, as far as the students, I spent some time in our guidance office uh, this first quarter at the high school. I mean, the students were asking why aren't they available online. Uh, but that's really why we're looking to pilot it rather than just say, here, yeah. we're, we're going I, with I appreciate this. that. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't want to just go full fledged. I like the piloting yeah. idea. Thank you. Um, were you just I'm throwing your throat, or did, did you have did an objection? <laughs> <laughs> no, just actually. <laughs> now, when she said that, you just happened to. No, no, no. no there's no other fact. I mean, the teachers, they just, you don't go back to the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. To pass out report cards, it's just much better. Yeah, I, I think from, from an administrative cost standpoint, I think it's great. Well, and at the Home Access Center has everything on the report card on a daily basis that they see. So if they're using HAC, they can see their GPA. They can't see their rank until the end of the quarter. Um, or at the end of the fourth quarter, run over another report. But everything else is accessible. The calculations occur immediately for the most part. There's a couple we run overnight. But otherwise, what they're looking at is what their report card is daily. Do you have any data on how many logins you get to Home Access Center? Or there, can you identify the parents who just don't check their kids' grades, I guess is what I'm asking. So our uh, student information is housed at the DCIU, and I did I asked for that information. Uh, there, is, no, there isn't really any okay. good reporting. I can run a report based on last login, you know, the last oh, okay. but I can't really see how often someone is. Or, okay. and, and yeah, I did ask that information. And I'm wondering, like, this wouldn't really make a change in terms of sending your report cards home even. Like, I, I wouldn't want for parents to be less engaged. But I mean, if they're not going to check the report card online, would they have, would, would they have looked at the paper copy anyway? Right. Right. There's nothing we can do. Put the responsibility back where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and honestly, the high school parents, not all of them, but they are becoming less engaged. Mm -hmm. um, we had a very poor um, attendance last night for the parent teacher conferences. I don't know if Thursday night was any better because it we. There, <coughs> we hardly had anyone last night. 
staff to do was poorly, poorly attended. Right. At the high school or even across the... No, no just at the high school. The school, yeah. the parents are still engaged. During yeah. the why could, do we have any idea why that may be? Is it like substantially different from previous years? Is this a trend? It's pretty similar. Okay. What they need to know, they see online. And the ones who don't look online don't come in anyway. Yeah. And uh, you have most of the, the attendees are freshmen, parents of freshmen. Once they get the juniors and seniors, they know where they're going. Yeah. Now, if there's a problem personality-wise, you want to come in and discuss that. Grade-wise, they can Okay. What about the psychological factor of somebody they love handing them a report card that's bad? I don't think that factor really, exists that huh? much. <laughs> well, they, the yeah, father can hand it to them. So. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. That could be a, a used pretty. To be free when the principal handed all ours out, and he wanted to, you know. Well, I remember. Well, there well, was a psychological factor there. When I was in school, it was just sitting on my desk, like face down, we picked it up. There wasn't a person. Yeah, yeah it's not well, usually it attached to yeah. distribution. Right. All right, so it doesn't seem like there's oh, okay. any objection moving forward. I guess we can move on and try to stay on topic. Well, let me, well, that let me just ask, so that's the question. To does it need to be the full board? Is this something, I mean, if it's administration, no. just... I, I just asked for it to come here because I didn't feel comfortable in saying, let's go ahead and do this. I do think it's a management, I do think it's a management role. I did express my concern at the elementary level. I'm not comfortable for it happening there. I think as an elementary team, we need to really look at parent-teacher conferences and um, make them more, the dates more specific to the end of the trimester so that we can start handing th those report cards out and getting the parents to still continue to come in um, at conference time, I'd like to see report cards disseminated that way opposed to them going home in a Tuesday folder or being mailed home. So I said to Sky, I said, I'm, I'm okay if the curriculum committee says, you know, they're comfortable with it, but I, I don't want to touch the elementary. I think you know, that's we're, good. We're having a meeting in seven days, so. Right. I can't hurt to make I don't. I, yeah, I, we, I can bring it up as a as a report, but I don't think it's anything that needs to be voted on. It's not no, anything that needs. Yeah, just, yeah. Just mention it. Just communication that you'll hear. You know that we're yeah. piloting this and go forward. So, all right. Thank you. All right. Great. Next up on here is conversation on the instruction of civics in our schools. This is something that I um, had wanted to bring up for a while. I was just waiting for the right time. I know if you watch the news, you'll see sometimes they'll do these like man on the street style interviews where they'll go up to a college. I haven't seen it done at a high school, but a college or even just like on the beach or on the boardwalk. I was going to say the beach. And they'll ask questions <laughs> like. Um, Take time to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Easter yeah. break. And yeah. Spring break. Yeah. yeah. And they'll ask, I don't know, who was our first president? And you'll have people say Abraham Lincoln. And I don't want to take those just few examples to use a very broad brush and paint picture that we're not teaching civics or anything. But from my own experience, I think that it could be um, highlighted in a different way. I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking back to when I took honor civics at the high school. It wasn't as much about even our government and the system of government we have and the strengths and the, the benefits and then the weaknesses of our government. It was more about analyzing political cartoons and that type of kind of surface level look, instead of really understanding what makes our system the way it is. I mean, if you look out in the audience, we don't have anybody from our community coming and participating in this civic process. So I don't know if, in my world, we would promote that type of civic um, engagement. And I just don't call that happening, not just at the high school level, but really throughout my Daniel Boone career, there wasn't a huge focus on civics. Um, and I know at the high school, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but at least when I was there, I mean, you had your, you had civics, I guess, 12th grade year, and really only half of 12th grade year, because the other half was economics. Um, I know you had humanities, and then you had U.S. history one and U.S. history two, which I guess has some civics components. Um, but I brought this up with Mr. Martino a while ago, just kind of in discussion, and we thought it would be good to include on the agenda. Uh, I mean, that's just an overview. I don't know what the solution is per se, but it's just a, a conversation I wanted to have. I think it can be a part of our curriculum review. Um, I know that when I met with a teacher at the middle school, and I'm not sure where civics is brought in uh, at the middle level, that would be my least experienced area, so either of you guys can speak to it. Yeah, the middle school would way to work. We have a geography course 
in sixth grade, a geography course in different than the world, and in the seventh grade, and in eighth grade, is a world cultures course. Uh, our U.S. history courses are at the high school mm -hmm. as the curriculum is But I, um, in speaking to the geography teacher who felt that, and, and this is just one professional's opinion, is that they, there could be something different done with the geography that doesn't have to be two years. Could we put be putting something else in yeah, there? there definitely could be, it's something that can be done, and there are school districts that have right. a U.S. history course there. And, to and focus they, on the branches of government yeah. and to, to mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a shame because, you know, and I'm probably as guilty of it at home because I'll often ask the question, who's our governor, who's the vice president? And, you know, I won't get an answer. I'm like, okay, so obviously I'm doing a poor job as a parent, but more importantly, so is your school. So I do think that, you know, minimally we should be making them aware of who's, yes. who's in office, um, who's governing, what's governance, you know, how is that different. But I think that it's something that we could definitely look at as we're going through our curriculum review cycle to see how we can bring this. Um, to, to the students at a younger level. I know they covered a bit in the elementary level. I want to say probably in fifth grade because I think I sat in a, in a social studies classroom where you know they were going over the branches of government. Mm -hmm. but, the kids all had it at the elementary level too. Right. It just doesn't stick. No, I, I, it, because it's complicated. Because my daughter was yeah. even complaining to me as a ninth grader saying, I don't get all this. It's very, it's, it's confusing. You know, you know, Senate versus you know, um, house. house and, you know, mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. so I get it. I think that, you know, if we could have it a little bit each way and, and what, what, what our focus is. Um, the only thing, it, I mean, if I may, just, and I mentioned this to you, that, that I don't like the way history is taught. Mm -hmm. it's, it's taught as a memorization course. Uh, I think if you focus on this, it should be like the practical application. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is who is one thing. But like so much in, in the world news there, the United States news today, hinges around the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't expect kids to memorize the Constitution, but how it applies. Mm -hmm. how, how the fact that, that the president is, is this branch of government, but the, the Congress is, is a separate branch. And the gist. Right. Just, and I'm, it's, I'm it's, sure that's how the, 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 the I'm sure that's how the standards are probably written. It's it's all in presentation then at that point. Um, so Just to go back to what you said, you don't see them doing high school because they can't interview minors without parental permission. They can't what? what is they interview that? minors on TV without oh, yeah. parental right. permission. Additionally, that's why you don't see them doing high school. Well, also, I mean, yeah, the kids need a ton <laughs> of opportunity to learn. True. You can't expect yeah. them to know. I mean, the division of government out of the womb. So what is our ninth grade? History. Humanities. Humanities. Explain that to me. What's it's the definition? It's like when dirigibles are blowing up. It's history, yeah. U.S. history? Yeah, it goes into that. See, see, all my experiences, I, ever since I've been in the room, I felt that the social studies curriculum, the spiral effect has been wrong. Uh-huh. Meaning, if you go to a lot of school districts, in middle school or junior high, you're looking at U.S history in seventh, eighth grade, uh, American Revolution, Constitution, uh -huh. Declaration, so on and so forth, through the Civil War and, and the construction, so on and so forth. And the reason is, in eighth grade, we teach basically it's a Western Civ course. Okay. And for an eighth grader to comprehend something that happened 3,000 years yeah. ago was virtually impossible. Whereas if you're teaching in seventh grade or eighth grade, you have Gettysburg an hour and a half away. You have Philadelphia. Yep. So the field trips become much more yeah, relevant. You know, tuned and relevant yep. to the students. And then if they learn that when they get to the high school, at least they have their foundation. Right. The high school is the foundation now for the U.S. And, and that's just not real right. solid because it, you have to teach what you know, Ms. Martino said, whereas opposed to taking what you already know and expanding it taking the concepts of the Constitution, which you know, and then expanding it and applying it. Is that something we can't do because of state state? Oh, no, we no, can. We can oh, we, we have no, no yeah, discussion. Is with her curriculum review right. cycle, that's where okay. all that will, will take place. But that's what I just going to ask. I mean, you started this by saying you thought this was wrong for a long time. What, what's, what would it take for us to change it? Okay. Curriculum writing. Yeah. Curriculum writing yeah. and review. And material. Yeah. And, and, and people uh, are, and I, I yeah, and, and, but 
in the world nowadays in education, there's no reason the new need to buy these hundred dollar books. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, and you're not it's tied. So you're not tied to anything test wise right, right. with regard to yeah, right. to our yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, I, is, I, I, that is a laughable thing. No, I, know. I, I agree. I yeah. But I, I, you know, we're, our goal is to have math done by the end of this year, and reading, I believe, is the other point that we wanted to get through, and we certainly can expedite social studies as part of what we would work on for the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Like and because there shouldn't be a whole lot that we'd have to do, and we would start first do the curriculum writing, and then we'd come back to the board and say, here's what we would need as far as um, you know, books or whatever materials. And then that way we can build it into the budget for that following year, because curriculum gets written first, and then um, the, the materials come afterwards right. to support it. So it would be a good process for us to start for next year. So, yeah. and, uh, we're discussing more like a concentric view, sort of like... Right. How the world presents itself from the child, and we, local, right. state, federal, mm -hmm. at, through the progression of time. And then we're talking about the Western civilizations when they're older and they know their place. We, we talk so much about being a good global citizen, and I laugh because our kids aren't really being taught to be good Douglasville citizens right. before they're being taught or, to be or, good or Daniel Boone Middle School, middle school citizens. Right. Or, yeah, right. Right to break well, down. On right. that note, on the same line, if you right. stop and think about it, the the, the public that used to come here. <laughs> you'll, you'll now, you weren't here last night, where, where we had one person walk in around 8 o'clock, and, and that was the that was the public. But um, one other they reason. don't know that, that your local elections impact you more than the national election. Yeah. I mean, they don't know that. Or, or they don't <coughs> comprehend it, as I should say. But I think we can start with um, getting our staff on board, you know, do some type of um, committee work, you know, this is what we want to look at for the 15-16 school year, get the input, um, and then start, you know, driving from there. And yeah, it's not like you're getting rid of the U.S. No, we're just rearranging things. Level. I would think that a high school teacher in history or Western Civ, if you have a base coming in, you can just take it down the shore. Right. Yeah, you, really, you really can. And, and as you said, Rich, apply the concepts of the Constitution out of every other one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think what Connor and I discussed basically is just making them more aware of what's going on around them. Yeah, I mean, even current events come into that. Like, I think, what, I, I don't think memorizing the Bill of Rights, that doesn't really accomplish anything. But how does this affect me, and how do I affect it, really? How do I fit into this system? How can I fit into this? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Definitely, yeah. All right, yeah. so you guys are on that. Yeah. Great. We're, I mean, we'll, we'll absolutely move forward with that. That's, yep. All right. Uh, so next up is preview high school course selection catalog. I don't have anything for that. If Mr. Hankel, if you want to present or. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just a bystander. Right? <laughs> is that enough? I'm trying to think. I know it was sent out. I'm, it was probably sent to me and Sandy, and she probably didn't realize that it needed copies. Do you want copies? Because I can that make. Would be great. I can go take care of that right away for you. I mean, we can wait. We can come back to that. If how long? Um, well, I'm sure they could probably. Can oh, you want to? Okay. Does it, That's you fine. want to start talking? Yeah, so already? What we've done a couple of things. We've made some changes and then started the pre-rec changes. You know where I've been for a while more yeah. into the upper. So with our new grading scale being 90, 80, 70, the prereqs of most of them are not a number. It's a grade. Okay. A B. Good. You know, so an 80 gets you in. It gets you 10. I mean, I'm okay with that. That's pretty quite. Uh, we've added <coughs> AP environmental head. Mm -hmm. And all the, they're, they're highlighted. We, that was something that we, we really wanted to do. We're, we're looking at, once again, conceptual bio. Our most, or our neediest get the least. So we want to add the lab so they're equal to all others. Was that not how it was before? Oh, I'm no. thinking back, yeah, wow. There's no lab with conceptual bio. No lab, which makes no sense because yeah. they need hands-on as anybody else. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Um, we're adding the AP government also at the senior level um, in replace of the uh, POD or the whatever the official title is. Um, they're going to do the AP government in the first half and then after the AP test, they're going to do the economics unit. Great. Um, I'm curious, Megan, what is AP government? AP I mean, government, would that be some civics? Yeah, from my understanding, and please correct me, I never got to do it, but it is your branches of government, it's your division so of... apply to what we were just Absolutely. Well, it's just a small group of people. As we say, it's the yeah. Yeah. curriculum, so that's good. Now, as we... And, and you'll see, when you, when you get the course, when, when you see the changes, and we're trying to get more AP and so on and so forth, there's going to be growing things. The number 10 of students are going to have to accept it, that in some cases may not be there. We either, you know, eliminate the course, or uh, we just kind of take the growing pains and give it a three-year cycle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. If it doesn't take off, then it's not going to take off. Mm -hmm. You can look at it that way. Well, aren't they half a year courses? Are we the talking about? Are a full year. Something they are full year. on that note, and I'm all for giving it room to grow. That's my own view. I'm not sure if the rest of the board shares that vision. But if there isn't as much interest one year, would it be possible maybe to offer it every other year and mm -hmm. then the year in between? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So have like a like have to, kind of pool of ideas. Yeah. yeah. So let yeah. the students know that hey, there's not enough interest this year, but we can or have it just out from the outset. We're going to offer it um, in 2015 and then 2017 and then in 2016 and 2018. That would be, and then you could add another rate. Absolutely, that's a great idea. It's like college. You get your catalog. You know, yes. You know it's maybe it's a fall course or a spring course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to kind of fit it in where you're going in mm -hmm. with your uh, educational path. I think that's a great. And that's idea. something they could take in 11th or 12th grade. Yeah. But right. It wasn't right. offered in their 11th grade year, knowing that it's coming next year. Right. Yeah. Is it comparative government in politics? Maybe. <coughs> I'm looking for the description. It's not. And I don't know why. I found a comparative government. But this is exactly kind of the, the way I was hoping that we would move, and I know this was not executed well at all on my part, but the honors 2.0 concept, taking some of those classes, like the honors POD and making it AP government, because it's so similar already. Right. Yeah. So I'm really glad, glad to see it moving that way, at least for that course. And we are. We're, we're moving forward to see. It's AP U.S. Yeah. government policy. Yeah. yeah. I have to get more kids into these sections. Uh, there are. The only thing, just let me address what you're saying about this. <coughs> this number ten. You know, I don't know that that has to be set in concrete. Right. But there's no way in the world we'd approve the teacher sitting in front of three kids. You know? Yeah. In those cases, and this is something that's. In some schools, I'm going to do it really as delicate as I can here, okay? In some schools where you have three, it is offered via online. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that either, but that could be negotiations, mm. a contractual this is issue. And luckily we have this negotiations upcoming. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of schools, and what they've done is, hey, listen, this is the way it's going to be, and they have the agreement in place because, as Mr. Hurley has, has you know, with the foreign language, the Latin, the Mandarin, Chinese, you know, those kinds of things. We may not get 10, but I certainly can get a total of 10 out of all the languages. Mm -hmm. I certainly can get a total of, I may not get 10 of AP German, but I may get 10 of AP German, AP Spanish, AP yeah. together. And oh, like an online. Online teacher moderator, correct? In a, in a lab. In some in some oh, school right. districts, Tablets. they're going to the blended, where they're in front of the teacher two or three days a week in front of the computer the rest of the time. Wow. Okay, so you're maximizing. So if the teacher out of a six day cycle, wow. you literally intend, instead of one instead of one section, like let's just say. U.S. government, whatever. So, so you're, you have Tom Hankel teaching period three every day. 
Well, now Tom Hankel teaches these kids, these two days of the six, yeah. these two, these two days, these yeah. two, these two days. The other the four, four days they're, they're in, there or online. And then the problems are taken care of during tutor time, things like that. Right. It's a, it's a school within a school. Yeah, that's how it, some virtual schools operate. So, teacher time, two days of the week. And, and I know, especially for my foreign language in college, a lot of it is online. We have the three day a week classes, but then we have stuff online too. Yeah. So, that's the way it's things are moving. For college. Yeah. And, you know, that's the way it, it should be. I mean, like, right. I think I it needs to go that yeah. route. But that's that what I mean, all I'm saying is, is, is there's a very fine line of balance. Between, I'd like to provide as many things as we can provide within financial reason. And, and online learning. That's right. the way it's going. <laughs> and whether we, you know, that's the way it is. And there are students who learn better online. And they just need a little help, a little, little kind of push. Yeah. So I mean, on that. And even when you go into, no matter what job you go into, there's going to be online training, there's going to be elements of that that students should be familiar with. So this isn't just teaching the course, this is teaching those valuable life skills. So yeah, I mean, if you can move forward with that, I mean, we'll have to deal with that, with other right. stuff. I've done some background work on Tom and I have been talking about this. In <coughs> We've done some background work on this. Um, there's two different types of approaches we, we can take. Um, the first is you can use an, use an online approach. Um, there's different <coughs> curriculum vendors that we can use for that. Um, there are some that are teacher supported directly, like online teachers, and there are some that are just, okay, the material's right in front of yeah. you, work at your own pace. Um, in almost all those options, we, and we have to work through some of these details with you, there, there would be some charges associated with that, um, either for the kids, um, there are some districts that build the kids directly. Um, when they do that, um, which would bring us to the other approach, the districts um, that I've looked at, um, they tend to do it through independent studies, okay. and then they might offer a foreign language course like an Arabic or a Chinese course, and they do it through um, an independent study. And we and already have the provisions them. for independent study. In their in their handbook, they have like go off, and then... How many, they, st sorry to interrupt, yeah. how many students have done independent study? Like, I don't remember anybody... When I, we, was I don't know the exact number, but what we've done a lot of, the, the foreign language teachers, are the ones who are saying, hey, listen, I don't want to lose Susie. Yeah. So let them do independent study. They have a study hall in this period. Have them kind of sit in like Spanish 4, but they're doing independent Spanish 5. OK, and that's great. And it's probably somewhere between 10 and 20. It's probably closer to 10. All right. I'm just glad that, that option is being utilized. The foreign language teachers, that way, Rich Simmons, you know Mr. Simmons? Yes. He's very much, he doesn't want to lose anybody for, for computer science or stat. He'll take them into kind of study all the time. Okay. I'll fit them in. We'll do whatever we're there. Good. And the arts. Well, let me suggest that to the five of you sitting on that side of the room, mm -hmm. anything that, that that's in your head that's like outside the box or that hasn't mm -hmm. been done in this district that you'd like to bring up, you've got basically a year to do it. Because a year from now, <laughs> five or six of the board members will be replaced, and you'll be starting from scratch. So, with with the nine that you have that you know, we would love to hear what you guys think. We need to do Even in this past year, the Over. vision and leadership from you guys on the side of the table has really blown me away. <clears throat> so, I mean, not to sound patronizing or anything, but and it's not still if we. Rob Peter kind of thing, we, we don't reinvent a wheel, but we, you know, Mr. Martino knows my experiences, you know, and. You can call me rich, but that's not right. Here, you know, <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you look on Downingtown Air School District's website, they have something called the Ivy School, and that's what I was talking about. It's called the Ivy, Ivy School. Ivy School? Make a note of that. He mentioned Downingtown, not Phoenixville. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? The Ivy School. It's the blended learning. It is that they created a school with the high school called the Ivy School, where teachers were trained and they maximized personnel by having a couple days of cycle in front of the teacher and the next in front of the computer. Wow. And, and it's in all of the academic areas. So while the union might be opposed to these things, would the teachers themselves like? 
I think that I think right, right now. What do you think the teacher individual response would be? Teachers want want to come to me, want to be more heavily involved in online learning or something. Really. My my perception, and, and that's all it is, because I hardly know any of the teachers. But the ones I have talked to, I think there's a great distinction between teachers, union, and it's just my perception. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> there's changes coming, and they're here. And the quicker we, they embrace to work together to move forward, that's the way it's going to be. Because other districts are moving that way. I, I had a principal's meeting last week, which I think is great Berks County principal's meeting, all the high school principals, and Boyertown, when their construction project's done, you will start at the high school, and then you can decide the path you want to go. You can go with, as you go through, you can move towards your STEM, that's your program, or you move towards your fine arts program, mm -hmm. you move towards mm -hmm. more of a, a math, total math. And then entrepreneurial. Correct. Right. And that's the way we're testing. Like, that's nice. What well, I'm saying is the things that are in your head. As models, we can incorporate as quickly as we can. I think we'd all be interested. And, and you can fluctuate back and forth if you start. Right. And you, you should be, yeah. Uh huh. And it's a great idea. So it's a great principle. We're going to call on that initiative. They don't have a name of it yet because they're in the middle of a, of a renovation project that's going to be completed in 2016 or something. Well, all I'm saying is the things that are in your head, voice them, everything's not going to go through, well, obviously. And, and, but four of the five of you sitting there were not in, in your position in January. And, but from wherever you were in January, you saw we had four new members of the board. And then we had two more new members of the board, and then we had two more new members of the board, and then the Lord knows what next December is going to be like. So right now we've got some consistency. We've got a board that, while it doesn't agree on everything, has pretty much learned to work together. So if you have ideas, bring them up. In addition to all of that, um, we, I know in the past some boards may have been more traditional in how we wanted to do things, we wanted to be more strict when it comes to the prerequisites and all that. But anyway, in my my mind, if any way that you can try to take this to the next level as a school, as a as a, a system entirely as a school district and as a community, if we could just I don't even know how how to articulate this, but we don't need to be bound by what we've always done. Right. <laughs> any way that we could my son what was that? Myself. Oh, I'm doing a nice little speech here, and you're having that dog barking. But anyway, yeah. So I like this is a great direction, and I'm I'm happy that it's going this way. In any way that you guys could could even could accelerate, so to speak. You don't want to be too fast. I know I'm making these changes, but in terms of, um, yeah, I just think it's great. I did have a few questions here. Um, I'm looking in the business section, and there are still some numerical prerequisites. Uh, Seventy-four percent for accounting two. I saw. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. Okay, I just yeah, wasn't. We get rid of all of those. We really do. And, and, um, and some of the changes, you know, not to be as retirements occur, new ideas come. Okay. And that happened this year in business. Scott Moon Line is a really good. Good. Position. What are we looking at? I'm sorry. Uh, I was looking in the business okay. section, which is on page <laughs> 19. If it's highlighted, does that mean that it's been changed? The highlighted has been a change, um, an addition. Um, if it's struck through, obviously that's a deletion. Um, did you bypass R9? Um, I was just flipping through. I, 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 I saw public art for public room. spaces. That seems yes, exciting. Yes, and that's what the art redesigned some of their courses to add some courses. Um, the public art for, uh, yeah, public art for public spaces. That is a fantastic. They're going to work on murals. They often get requests mm. in the community along with in the district to paint murals and this is a course for those Excellent. students Excellent. to do. We, we tried to... First, Jenny, Dane, and I, and then Megan, and I, the high school leaders. Yeah. You know that, are you? 
Yeah, and I saw in the hallways even you have some murals going on. And, and that's talking to Karen Schreiner. What can we do? She goes, well, a lot of kids come back and go down to a study hall. So instead of them taking a study hall, they can take yeah. a half a credit, no pressure class, where they're designing murals for the buildings in the different areas. That's great. And start to address the building up. And then if a community area would like something done, we go out and create something for them and do that. And that'll go with what Mrs. Torchin said about you know, community service type of thing. You know. Yeah, I mean, even tie that into civics. You could do that. Here, look, this is a, I mean, this is right next to the police station. This is what, I, I don't know. Right. You could do, you could take this well, stuff and, in so many different directions. Well, and another interpretation I think I got from either, I don't know who gave it to me, but it was it was more or less like if I or, or any of the administration had um, a need for something to be put together, that this would be the forum to go to and say, look, um, if you've been at the high school, and I know that she didn't necessarily do it, but I believe they painted it, there's a lot of the D and the B intertwined, which I think is you know a, a great symbol for us. And I would love to see some of that in in the district office. I'm trying to gather artwork to hang, um, student you know type of stuff. So as I have projects, I could go back to you know this teacher and say, okay, I'd yeah. like your kids to put some of this yeah, stuff together for us. Press ready. Blazer, they could files they could be doing things. Save money yeah. for us by having the same as things work done. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Blazer Foundation, you know, yeah. helping to um, you know or signs when we did signage here. Right. Yeah. Or or create anything. So I think it's a great class and kids would love to be in it and be a good use of their time. Question mark on that. They don't know what number it is. That's just for us because when you create a new course oh, okay. add like the course number that okay. is like on the master schedule. Yeah, and okay. until you okay. approve it we can't put it in the master schedule yet. So there's a lot of the numbering in the descriptions, those types of things like the capital some of the numbers that were We're still being a little exclusive there, but I guess that's necessary because you, you, know, you want the kids to and, then and also, thing. not to interrupt, you don't want to have, if kids should be studying and focused on other stuff, sure. or you don't want to have them do other classes, I guess. And then in, in, well, the, in uh, little study halls, I'd rather yeah. be doing Business. Things. Well, I'd rather them be studying if they're not <laughs> making an 80. And, and they redesigned, in art, they redesigned the graphic design and photography course. It was just graphic design. Now they're going to, like, just as you were speaking about the different design and the logos, that piece also. And, They've also emphasized some of these classes are more challenging that they wanted to put honors waiting with some of it because of the extensive requirements that and the work that their kids are going to be able to do. They want to give them the value for doing it and moving into the upper level. I want to throw this idea out there and not in the overarching way I did last time, but would it be possible to take, like let's say I'm enrolled in marketing. I want to go on in college to major in marketing. It's what I love, it's my passion, and we only offer one marketing class in DB. I'm looking in the business section. Would I, could there be a mechanism for me to go to my teacher and lay out um, some extra objectives that I'd like to accomplish? Maybe in here, we're only, we're delving into the functions of marketing and how to target a specific group of people. Let's say I, as a 12th grade student, want to put together some type of case study and I want to really go above and beyond what I need to do. Maybe, would it be possible to, in cooperation with the guidance department and all that, to lay out at the beginning of the course, here's what I want to accomplish on my own, separate from the rest of the class. Could I receive honors waiting for all that extra work? So instead of it being on my transcript as marketing, it would be honors marketing. Maybe that could help the students get into programs at more competitive schools. As, as long as we have a consistent Type of, okay, this is the course. This yeah. is the okay. curriculum for it, right? And this is the addition. Okay, what's involved in the expansion? Mm -hmm. We can do anything. Okay. Okay, and we welcome anything in the marketing teams. We have to do the business department better. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. We mm -hmm. have to do it better. And the marketing and doing what you said is a great can idea. Can we start with that? concept? Yeah. Well, my yeah. thought on that the concept, level and honors yes, concept. that concept, I think, if you applied something similar to almost every course, we don't offer honors in now, suddenly our curriculum, and it's all student-driven, it's, um, it's not even really on the teacher as much as it's on that student who wants that extra notation. Um, it's, it is, though, because the teacher wants to grade the material. Well, yes, but it's on the student to do the work and to go beyond. In class, you're getting that, the, the same lesson as every other student. You are doing that. However, on your own, 
If you can reach that level that you and the teacher have determined is, or the teacher and the, or the school district, whatever, has determined is honors worthy, then let's give you honors credit. And I, if we do that, then every class I think, could be an honors I class. think that the concept overall is great. I think that before we put the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. I think that we should identify courses that we would like to see that be expanded to so sure. that we had the curriculum ready yeah. so that the teacher could say, okay, I am prepared to do this, and we could advertise it and say that we, we could do it, but it doesn't have to necessarily be a whole class of 10, um, that it could be a student. I know that you do, um, help me, um, independent studies. That, but But I would rather say, we're identifying a couple of courses that we would like to give that extension to, allow for curriculum writing so that we have it in place and so that we're not scrambling when the kid, when the student, not the kid, I'm sorry, when the student comes forward and says, I would really like to expand that. Mm -hmm. I think that, again, we try to engage their interest level like, you know, Mr. Hurley did, you know, with his survey and see, you know, what are the things. And, and I think maybe we could probably take from that survey some things that could be expanded. But I would hate to just have somebody say, oh, I love marketing and I want to do it and we're not prepared to be able oh, to do it. Oh, I understand. Yet. I'm thinking, That's all. and I do appreciate your caution in that regard. Um, I'm thinking almost, what if, and this is just an idea, what if we had some type of criteria for the entire high school to take, and this might be pushing it a little bit, to take any class and say that if you want honors waiting, you have to write maybe a 10 page paper by the end of the semester or the end of the year on the topic to be determined by you and the teacher. You have to pass an honors final or something. And if you don't pass the honors final, then you just get academic waiting. Like it's just a series of um, very concrete things, but it's up to the individual teachers to make that work, so to speak. So there's already laid out right. the things you need to do. There's not a separate curriculum necessarily. The only, the only pushback the that you might get is from the association saying, I'm not prepared to do this. I don't have I don't have the 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 materials to make that. And is a ten page paper enough to give that? You know, that well, that's could, not a call for well, association I know. to make. No, I, I understand that, but us expecting them to put together. I mean, if really, it's, if it's not if it's, right. It's like, it's, I mean, it's really. Well, I, I have a different pushback for you. Okay, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea. No, yes. I'm not but, either. But yeah. you're saying, well. Teacher and, and, and the student would get together and develop this. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like it's too subjective because teacher bites may feel, well, this is what's required, and teacher torsion may feel well, less or yeah. more. I don't well, it could be a department thing. thing. You could have the subjective. department head and the student work. Department you could have. Head, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is just an idea. If you guys take it and run with it, drop it if yeah, you want. No. But so I think this is yeah. because it, it, a lot more brainstorming. On this. Yeah. 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 Areas, though, that I think Connor, you can put it in quicker, meaning take away the standard subject area. Yeah. Let's oh yeah. Say, let's take focus on taking, the business school. Yes. You, you, that's first, you, you're taking. Yeah. Say you're taking a class web design. Mm -hmm. All right. Meg and I are sitting in the web design. All right, I'm just getting my half credit and having a good time and whatever. Megan goes out and designs a website for a local business. Mm -hmm. yeah. That could constitute honors yeah. criteria. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. You out Perfect. into the community, right. you Perfect. satisfy service learning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do something like that or web design. Or Scott could take somebody under their wing, give them a part teachers. of. Yeah. With the teacher's web pages. Right. A lot of teachers who really don't know how to create a great web right. page and things like that. So you start, start as, as Mary Beth said, you start real small. Mm -hmm. so There's not real curriculum yeah. that you have to worry about. You take maybe a web course. But the, well, would you developing the standard? Right. Yeah, you, my concern you is have to develop a, a, a written criteria. Right. Because my concern is that if you have real competitive class mm -hmm. and somebody takes something like this that. I don't want to say it's easy, but for for a person who loves computers yeah, yeah. and loves yeah. doing this and does it on their own, and says, "Oh, I can get m more of a credit by doing this," and this, and you have other kids who are taking harder things, don't get the same grade. 
Well, I mean, that's what nothing, I'm just looking at. I, I I'm just looking that at that. I, I know how that. kids work. But you know, <laughs> that's what we want. We want right. Them to develop the call of their own. Yes. Heart. But it so. but it becomes competitive because now we've kind of. Well, let um, us on those students to go out and and make and well, take their own courses the next. But what? Careful. The teacher has to be prepared. The student has to be prepared. Like as Mary Beth said, the carpet for the horse. Any teacher, when you're in front of a classroom and working with students, even individually or a small group, large group. You need to have a plan, you have to have your objectives, you have to have your goals, and you, you have to have that in mind, and you gotta figure it out. When the kid shows up and says, well, I wanna do this on the first day of school, you know, and, and we're working on our timeline for the course selection guide, that's probably the reason why it's here now, yep. so that we can get our course selection process approved, but you will have to do it almost a year prior to, and even for if everybody yeah. to know what's what, and, and offer it up to not just the one student who says this, mm -hmm. to the masses, because you're gonna get some pushback from the family to the wide But we don't disagree, this could fit into that yeah. gifted criteria as well. Mm -hmm. Getting a credit for doing this. Yeah. If you don't want to do the mentor part of your GIEP mm -hmm. and you want a gifted class, here's what we're offering. I just want to make, like, this, I don't want to, I don't want to discuss it just in the context of mm -hmm. gifted because no, no, no. it needs to be for everybody. But it, could just, it could it, but it could start that way. And it could definitely help our gifted yeah. program. Yeah. But I just wanted to bring it up as something for you guys to, mm -hmm. if you can make something like this work, and I have a few different, obviously I think number one used to be if these kids can get a better experience and learn more and develop that thirst for learning, that's obviously priority number one. But even in terms of getting into these competitive colleges, which... Does, it's going to be a small number of does students. Does our business ed class offer students an opportunity to go out and shadow? That's one thing that we could expand because Gabby's, and Zach went through it too, at Conrad Weiser, their basic business ed class um, gives them an opportunity to explore the career choice that they are thinking about, and he did a lot of stuff in engineering. But then he had an opportunity on two occasions uh, to go out and to be with an engineer for a whole day mm -hmm. and you know shadow him and get a feel for wow this is kind of cool he went to Reading Bakery mm -hmm. play um, the the they make all of the um, uh, splits unique pretzels mm -hmm. and he got to see what an engineer did in that capacity but I think we could take a class like that already and expand that part of it and then have them report back on what their experience was and things that we already have that we could maybe just put out there a little bit further yeah, that, that might be the easy place where we already have the curriculum, we already have the idea, we're giving them opportunity and now go with it and, and see what you want to do. And business is the business systems and technology. And that really, the, aren't a lot of kids end up in that because that, that's for the students, excuse me, that don't um, take a language, right? Right. Well, yeah, and things, in the business I department, guess that. And, that's a great class. Well, and some had it. They're working on Hello. the business department again with the changes in place and the staffing they they spent some time looking at what they currently have. There there was question of we, we, we want to more coordination. We want to talk about curriculum and, and, and developing new courses that we think would be more appropriate. Um, Scott Malone has come and has now taught at the elementary level and the middle school level, so he has a lot of background of what the kids have the experience and skills in already. So there's a lot of conversation, and, and this was their hey, this is what we know we could do successfully next year. But long term, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of well, ideas. My son learned how to balance his, the credit, uh, the checkbook mm -hmm. in the business tech mm -hmm. credit card. They planned a trip and they had to do a brochure and figure out where they stayed and you know, mm -hmm. they cost everything. It's just such realistic mm -hmm. learning. I was so. Well, let, let me happy ask you a question that's near and dear to my heart. Previewing your course catalog. Is this going to cost us anything? <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. We're Other than any new courses. Curriculum writing, curriculum writing. which is in our yeah, budget. And it's not going to cost additional personnel. No, no, we're. Everything we went was how can you make this work? Like technology, education, some of their things. They're redesigning what they, they know what they teach. They said, well, we're going to take this from being a full credit to being a half credit. And because we think we can you know, do a great job in that time period, and we're going to add. Um, technology innovation course. So no, that's all fine, I, but I had to ask the question. Yeah, that's what, that's, that's no, what we, they're they're adding animation, like they're doing all these yeah. things and they know what the current staff the, the directive has been expand, but try to expand with what we already have. And with that being in mind, 
It doesn't mean that the staff have to be currently in your building, but that was part of where I was coming from that if I see that I'm going to have to downsize in an elementary, I'm going to look at who, who is teaching something that has a cert at the high school level that would want to move to that level instead of getting rid of the, you know, instead of furloughing or, you know, right. cutting out, I'm right. trying to expand the courses at the high school with what we have. Yeah, By I don't think, I mean, I haven't heard any, any I was going to say a big push, I haven't heard any push from the board mm -mm. about reducing positions or anything. Not but. currently the way that the budget's being presented. But on top of that, I want to say that Scott Matz has jumped in, and he's more or less helping to expand that technology group uh, if I'm not misspeaking, um, that he is looking to take a few, get them some other type of um, professional development, mm -hmm. come back with the group, help to you know educate the rest of the group so that he he can help them um, you know do what we need to do to make our technology ed classes um, more current. <laughs> Might be a better way to say it. So I, I don't want to go off on tangent here because of time constraints, but I, I, I like what you said about shadowing people. I mean, mm -hmm. Drexel has that whole co-op yeah. program where you go out and actually so practical yeah. application of, of what you do, and, and I just think that's it's important even in high school. Yeah. Than sitting in a class well, and that's why you know, I would like you know people that want to be a teacher to have. They're in an educational environment. Why not go and work in a classroom? For credit, so did we? Were we able to implement that into the course guide? Are we able to get something in there? Like I, I was calling it service learning. I don't know what else you want to call it. Um, we have to implement it now through study halls. So and maybe, and and maybe that study hall t staff member then is responsible for the group of kids that want to go out there. That they'd have to be responsible for. Okay. Speaking of study halls, and I want to transition into marketing, and we've been talking about honors and AP courses, so we can talk about more specifically marketing, but on the note of study halls, I know that we've talked a lot in the past about trying to drive kids from study halls into taking these classes. Uh, how, have you noticed, well, I guess registration hasn't begun. Um, what was that? You have to approve I know, this yeah. first, then I can do it. Are we approving this? Um, I'd like to get on the agenda for December. Okay. Because they, sure. they would love year. nothing more than to be able to start this course election come January. Okay. Can you give us a final copy then to well, look at? That, what you have is what? I know that there, there are a few changes I saw with the letters we talked about in the business oh, section. The yeah. Um, if, if that's it, I mean, I'd like a little bit more time to review it before yeah, voting. Yeah, that's what I think. So yeah. I was going to say, you're going to put it on the agenda for December 2nd. If you can get it out to the board. Sure. Then. Can we make a recommendation that night, like from committee? We can well, talk we can about just look it. Look around the table. Yeah, right? so I, I, yeah, I wanted on for discussion that, so people know that it's coming and you know what concerns they might and have that, that at the cow. Everybody get a copy of it in their hands. Then? We can. I can. <laughs> Megan gave it to me electronically, and I'll just push it forward to good. the board. And then we can bring out the highlights of the curriculum yeah. committee and, and that meeting. But if you put it on the agenda for the second. I'll have two weeks to vote. Right. On that note of mm -hmm. what, when we bring it to the full right. board, if you guys, if one of you would be able to articulate maybe in just like a brief memo or something, just an email, like how many new courses we're adding, mm -hmm. what in your mind is are the greatest changes moving mm -hmm. forward so we can sell that to the other board members and the community? Because that's the type of stuff, speaking of positive coverage for the school system, this is, this is a good thing we're doing. But and if we can put numbers change. on it. The biggest change, Connor, is that students get, especially junior and seniors, they're not taking the same classes that they took 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. The options have increased dramatically mm -hmm. with semester courses or every other day courses. Those options, like the film and, and literature course, the mythology courses, those kind of courses, the, the options have just increased dramatically. We should put out the courses. Right. For this year, and we have that, and, and I don't know that, that the public at large no. knows about it. And if they don't have a kid in the district, or if they're not a student who reads, I mean, we we're, we're we taking them to the kids. Yeah, we, we do, no, but which is important. We need to it to Correct. The community. We took a 20th century curriculum, and we added animation. 
we added all this stuff. We're moving this district into the 21st century. And that's a credit to you guys at the high school. We should put out some type of press release even to the Mercury mm -hmm. and the Reading Eagle. Oh, they should I know. I can do that. I mean, it, my response, the response I keep getting from the Reading Eagle is that we're really shorthanded and we don't have a um, reporter, oh, yeah. a permanent well, reporter we'll assigned to you. But, about. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I think there's the only, the, the only thing that we're trying to shy away from is that it seems like it's up and coming that we're putting it out and schools have had it in place and we didn't want to embarrass ourselves by right. putting something that was out that people are using. But if right. we want to just try to... as much as just saying, Daniel Boone, right here, schools you know, expanded their curriculum right. by... Dramatically, yeah. By 11 right. courses or, or Increasing. We could just, and you know... Point out a course that we that we offer with other schools in the county. Don't. Maybe it's... I don't know. Maybe it is animation, for example, or something that. Well, I know that other districts aren't necessarily offering AP European yes. history, which is something that we have added. And to then our talk about direction. how great it is to how it helps save money for colleges. And now we're getting into the marketing aspect. I'll we'll let you write it, <laughs> and then we'll, I'll send it along. They should put me on their payroll, <laughs> advanced place on college board. Press release as opposed to waiting for the reporter right. to pick up on it. Yeah. Well, and another idea might be maybe maybe we should start locally and and let just the taxpayers in Daniel Boone know, you know, these are great things that we're doing. And that can go in our newsletter that we're looking to put together with Blazer Foundation and trying to promote the positive things in our district. On the newsletter, really quickly, and this is a little bit off, maybe Scott, since you're here, it's actually perfect. I know on the website, when it comes up on the news site, it pretty much just says, the newsletter is available in the newsletter section. So you have to navigate up to the menu. You have to hover. Can we just put a link in that little announcement yeah. as well? Like, so, it's yeah. available in newsletters or click here. I, I, that is done purposely, and you think you're asking a simple thing. It's, it screws up the website. Oh, okay. That's why, because normally, yeah, I would directly yeah. link to it. Um, I'm looking at changes for our website. That's, yeah. Great. Okay. So that kind of issue will be. Sorry, it's yeah, not related I, I at all. Was the time. Was caught on to that, but yeah, there's a reason why. This oh yeah, and it's been there. bothering me for the past few years yeah. now. Right. <laughs> I just want to remind you, Mr. Kirsch, you, you already screwed up my dinner, but I promised my granddaughter before she went to bed. All right, we have an hour left on Wait, this I, meeting. I, we'll try I to go. Um, uh, we need to see the materials that have been used. There's courses. We need no, to review. There's no new material. There's. There's no that books for the there's one the AP one US history is the American that? history. For which one? The AP US history was very controversial, I understand. There's I have a can you tell us about it? Because I'm not sure we should be offering that if the board knew about that. The, the political bias in the AP US history was big controversy, a push, right? Um, I would like to explore the, curr the curriculum because I'm not sure that that's something appropriate to offer. I mean, I checked with, I mean, I got the email from you earlier about it, and I talked to Kelly Jones, and she said no, that it wasn't even real accurate. With that, that blurb that came up. Really? She said, yeah, she said it's, it's such a minute part of that course. It's, I think Kelly would be the one that answer I forget about it. Who is that? Kelly would be the one that Kelly Jones. She's Kelly the Jones. department head for the social studies. Um, the book that they are proposing to use for the APE, I have the so we can get a form and we we'll look at that, review it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand some of these AP courses are pushing anarchy as opposed to the benefits of the free market system, citizenship, patriotism. Respect for the AP courses aren't organized in a way that they can really push anything. It's, I mean, there are required readings, I guess, so to speak, for the test. Like, there are books that the tests are lined up to, and really, the only thing about APs is, I mean, they, I don't want to say the only thing, but the big difference is you take a test to get college credit at the end. There's not necessarily a set curriculum, if I'm correct, that's being pushed down from anybody from some type of government or or anything. The college test. boards. The college, the college board, boards, but okay, they don't push board. down. They put out the framework like we were discussing earlier, right. and then it's up to the and districts and the teachers the to framework. make it fit the framework. The A-push framework was, con was very controversial. I appreciate you looking into it. I did. I remember seeing a link, and I did click it. I didn't spend too much time reading it, because again, I know that it's there's well, flexibility I there. I guess the administration could, could continue just to make sure that we are not pushing anarchy over the free market. I guess, I don't know how else. Okay. Um, I guess if we're ready to move on now to marketing.
um, high school honors and AP courses students. We're talking a lot about AP. So if we can just maybe briefly, if you guys could tell us like what your plans are to, to sell it. It's the teachers. We, we put it on the teachers. And this came about uh, a couple of years ago when we did not require physics. And if you remember, yeah. a couple of physics teachers were a little concerned that uh, students would be able to take Earth and Space Science and actually receive science credit. So, so I told them, you want, don't want to lose physics, not marketing. We would give them time. Take time to say, okay, this is what's involved in physics. This is what's involved in this. So what happens is the teachers in the major subject areas, and a lot of the others, but major ones especially, talk about what's involved in the next levels. Okay. And, and uh, they're trying to get the students to attempt the higher levels. And with the knowledge full well that we'd rather them attempt an honors or accelerate or an AP, and if it just isn't working out, they're not going to die there. I don't care if it's the end of the first market period. They can come back. Yeah. We're good with that. Good. I know that in speaking to a family member who's at the high school, my little sister, I ask her, are you going to be taking some of these courses? And she's... I don't know. I think I might just to accelerate it and give it a shot. That's my message. And if students knew that, it really, I don't want to say is no risk because, I mean, we, we need to prepare students for the real world too. But they, if, if they knew that, just push yourself a little bit. It might work out a whole lot better than you anticipated. Um, maybe I'm a little bit too idealistic there. But I'm glad that the time is being spent in these classes marketing it and explaining. And if we could maybe explain the benefits of, of these courses even, and this is actually going to be a big part of the discussion coming up with the BCTC, not just to the students, but even the parents. If parents knew that, hey, you could save tens of thousands of dollars in college if your kid takes enough AP credits over, you can graduate early. And that's saving room and board, that's saving tuition, and parents would really enjoy that, I think. Um, and same with the BCTC. You can get college credit from the BCTC. And that those are types of things that maybe students aren't really thinking about. If you were in uh, ninth grade, you're not really thinking about the finances of post-secondary education, um, but certainly the parents might be. So if we could perhaps communicate some of those benefits to parents, Do that would be Do we offer um, visits beyond the ninth grade year to BCTC? Anybody can send it's not limited to ninth grade. Okay. You so so you you open it up to everyone. Okay, that's great. All right. They were down already release by this. Right. And when we opened it up, I kind of stayed in front of her. I spoke to her to know that you come out with a trade, you're guaranteed virtually a job and real good money. Not ready to be, but you know. Oh no! It, I mean, the, it was very nice. impressive. That's very, right. That's the medical why they way. Oh, to the parents walking yeah. through that night. I okay. think it was Larry Speed and, and Lauren Small and I were, were saying that if, if a kid goes home and says, "I think I'm going to Brooks Career Technical Center," um, if the parent has the same concept of Votech, right? that existed when, when I was in high school, they're going to say, no, you're not. You're not going there. And I don't think they realize the yeah. difference. Because yeah. I didn't until we went that night. Mm -hmm. Do they have a parent? They should, they have some type of promotional, they have a promotion. That's what I was thinking, a video clip we can put on our website. School, we would just I, that, yeah, that's that would great. be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I took the liberty a few days ago of sending an email to Mrs. Twardowski, who's on this committee, mm -hmm. and she's our BCTC rep, and I asked her if she could, if she had any ideas, she's also on this committee, I asked her if she had any ideas for marketing the BCTC, and she actually sent that email out to the entire BCTC Joint Operating Committee, uh, and they had a few responses, I want to pull them up here, um, about marketing, and even having one person suggested, I forget what school district, having the students... Uh, who graduated successfully from the program and who are now employed, have them Back come to the high school it, yeah. and promote it during an assembly. I'm going to forward these emails out to, I'll send them to Mrs. Torsh and Mr. Hankel. Um, I should log them on the website. They have videos on their website. Of the, 
They're, they don't, they're not personally having a tough time getting students to attend their classes. No. They're full. That They don't need to market it because... Well, we need it, Daniel Boone students yeah, who are marketing. Right. We, could, we put students. together a video that our students did to promote. I don't know. Can we swipe their video and put it on our... Yeah, ask them. Can you? Okay. There you go. Or customize it to be more appealing. <laughs> How about our kids for it? like to hear about their peers. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but in line with Just don't go through cartoon training, stock. There's, there's a TV commercial that, that runs repeatedly with this home builder from New York Technical Institute who has his own business and only hires other kids from New York Technical Institute. Uh, Speaking of which, <laughs> some thoughts here. Um, I spoke with parents at uh, parent-teacher organization meetings and gave them literature when they asked questions. I figured it would be good to start planting the seed early. Some have older siblings who may be interested, uh, or some parents have older children who might be interested. Uh, and then this one other board member said that he likes the idea of having, well, something Mrs. Twardowski said in her email was maybe making the BCTC tour more mandatory. So you had all students. Don't you require, doesn't everybody get it in ninth grade? It's an option. There's a presentation and then they oh, choose to go to the do you know how many people? Mm -hmm. BCTC comes down and they're presented it and then they're given the opportunity to go to How many students go on that trip do you know? I didn't go on the trip. I wish I did, but I didn't. Oh. Well, that's more than I expected, so that's good. And what is the program that they have in ninth grade where the kids get to kind of sample? That that um, they could sign up for it's that's grade. a service occupations class okay. in ninth grade that you could possibly get accepted to and it's been a, a, a it's it's typically for our special ed students and it's about two of them per school okay. that because it's it's giving them an opportunity to get into a right. field that just, right and it's competitive. Okay. Now we have all ninth graders go to the assembly, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was something that Dr. Lees recommended. Yeah. Um, another item that he recommends is have the Daniel Boone High School counselors advocate for the ninth grade students to participate in the ninth grade visit. Mm -hmm. um, if, 30%. if counselors simply leave it up to the students to determine to go, the response will be limited. So they're suggesting actually go out there and, and advocate for these students. And they do, and, and certain, certain teachers, depending on the level of the students, they teach lots of, I know I used to, at different levels of different depending on subject areas, very much advocate okay. to it. Have you done, have you submitted your permission slip? Here, let's get you another copy. There's a lot that occurs at many levels, the resource teachers in particular. Uh, and then additionally, this is very notable, especially in light of the conversation we were having earlier tonight, and this is difficult, I'm guessing, with scheduling, but um, it's worth saying, provide a flexible schedule to allow students who attend BCTC to take a college prep sequence of academic courses, including honors and AP. I mean, we don't stand in the way of that, certainly. We but look, We look at what they've signed up for and, and try to get them scheduled in the morning. Great. And maybe if we can communicate that. I'm trying to think. I probably, even after going to this, I, I don't know anymore, but I probably still would not choose to go to BCTC in my own personal case. But seeing the things they offered, they I, had, you were all there. You know, it was absolutely I incredible. I think in the past, at least when I went, this is quite a few years ago, I think there was kind of a stigma attached to kids that, that went to these yeah. career and technical schools, where um, today I think it's different, yet I wonder if that stigma still it, exists. When I was in school, it still yeah. did. Um, I think it's weakening, but it's going to be around for a while, and any, anything we can do to counter that, and I think really the way to do that is getting students who might... Um, continue to, to promote that stigma almost. Well, maybe we need trade assemblies. Or maybe we need to try to have people come in to speak to the trades. Well, that would be beneficial, Something I like think. Something like that, right? you know, sign up. It's kind of like, you know, here's well, what we're going to have. I don't think the stigma is more with the parents than with the students. Well, I, I think it's with the students, too. But if you, if you have this trip be more required in ninth grade to go and see the BTC, BCTC, then those students who are going to be the ones perpetuating this belief that it's that there is a problem if you go to BCTC, or you're a problem student if you go to BCTC. If they see what we saw, 
they're not going to think that anymore. I don't think so. Right. What it comes down to is education of the students yeah. at all and levels, especially if they saw the kids in their um, their uniform. Yeah. Like if you, it, it's one yeah. thing to go there, but to see those kids, those the, the in the cafeteria yeah. or the yeah. kitchen in with their the, chefs hats on yeah. and their names on their yeah. their you know that to me made it look like this is professional. Yes. I totally agree. So the way it works is you do the assembly, you take the kids, and then the parent nights are shortly thereafter. That the kids say, I want to go to BCTC, let's go, and, and there's different open houses at different nights where the parents can then go and participate in that as well. Well, and, and you know, we just say ninth grade field trip is everybody's going to BCTC. Yeah. If you don't want to go, mm -hmm. well, we're not going to say you don't get to go, but if you're choosing not to go, I guess you don't go to school that day or <laughs> if you're a kid. But I Off think, the record. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I know it would be a, probably a lot of buses. One thing we need to make sure, if we do that field trip to BCTC, we can't let them serve our students food because they're never going to want to come back to AB <laughs> yeah, after I, having that delicious dinner I'm that those students are providing. Yeah. Um, but, but if that's yeah. just something else to keep in mind, again, it's changing mindsets. Uh, not just in students, yeah. but parents as well. And the way to do that, like I would not... I would probably still have that mindset had I not visited the BCTC. So do they still only go 10th, 11th, and 12th grade? Okay, so we still need to grab them in ninth grade. So that would be the mandatory trip. You're going. See ya. Yeah, and their applications for do November 18th. Like right. Have, it's, it's, mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's quick. It's a quick decision. turnaround. Right. And, and some of those programs are very competitive. I know they are, and they fill up quick, and we well, have nobody. We get a gauge on the demand, too. Yeah. One more thing on that note. Uh, his fifth request here is determine ways to recognize and celebrate publicly the achievements of students who attend BCTC at DB. Students must feel their career choice is important and valued by the DB staff. Uh, that I think we can do better, not just recognizing PCTC students, but all students. Um, on that note, actually, and looking at the time, I think we're, we're good. But uh, would it be possible, and this is, I don't know if this is the best place to do it, but since we talked about recognizing um, students, I know we have an athletic wall of fame. Would it be possible to get, I know Pottstown has an alumni honor roll where they'll recognize Pottstown graduates and they'll include their names on this list. They'll have a ceremony each year inducting them into this. I don't know if we want to have a wall of photos necessarily, but anyway, we could recognize alumni. And that's just building up this Daniel Boone community. Um, that should be something, not really a, a board initiative necessarily, but the administration, maybe if you want to look out at Pottstown. Just, kind of recognition. Yeah, Laser so it's not like it ends. trying to do something uh, along those like lines. The foundation, like some districts call it the academic wall of fame. Or right. Yes. That, nature, so. that would be great because then it's, it's not that you graduate and you're done. You're done with this community necessarily. You move away or you're done with your school system. No, it, it becomes, and this is something that Mr. Basil talked about on the Revenue Enhancement Committee before, you also have a base of people you can go back to. I know he was trying to solicit donations where he right. wanted the committee to do that. And Blazer Foundation mm -hmm. is working on that. Yeah, it's yeah. all about building yeah. community. and Yep, yeah, they're working on that. We're, we're working graduates. jointly. And that, that's something that could be incorporated in it. All right. I'm sure that that would be something that would come up. So I just wanted to throw yeah. that idea out there we'll while we're Get talking. you on the wall of fame, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Website extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when did you graduate, Daniel Curtis? Okay, wow. I didn't know that. Um, so back to so BTC, BCTC marketing, I don't know, we threw around a few ideas. I think that ninth grade field trip mm -hmm. is definitely a great idea. Yeah, make that a little bit more mandatory. And yeah. Hone them in. I, I think what if we can get the that? video, as Mary Beth Kiesel said, and put it on the website, yeah. Think about it. Uh, well, <laughs> give her credit. access to it, just to the walkthrough we did the other night. Get Andrew Bear on it. Yeah. We could send him over. He could take some video of our kids in there. You could take him over in the uh, van. You don't have anything else to do. I was going to say box truck. Uh -huh. How's the video um, group doing at the high school? You, know, you had just got some video equipment in the year you toured. What is that? Are they? Yeah. You have a lot of kids? Brian Hoffman, who came over from the middle school for the yearbook, he'll also do whatever, you know, because of his knowledge of theater and things like that. He put that program together for the seven music, so anything they ask him, put something together through your program. Yeah, but maybe if we can grab one of the kids and just maybe take them over and say, we, wanna, we, we want to... Um... Even at the middle school level, I saw a video on anti-bullying, and I think I that, that was from the middle school. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they quality. do some good stuff. They're, they're very creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And even having that stuff shown in a board meeting, I know that the media hasn't been out in force, but getting that stuff out there in the community, just showing the great stuff, again, that's happening in Daniel Boone and countering that narrative that, that we're we not. We might have to go back to the old-fashioned way and drive around in the truck and have the megaphone. <laughs> that would, out. Uh, we, we'd takes, get attention right? there. <laughs> You'll do it. All right. And the other the last thing before you go on, to get the quote stable way, and it goes with online learning, you can't have a lot of honor kids right now don't go because of where the honors classes are in their schedule and they feel like this, 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 this. With online learning, they don't have to worry about it. If we can't get an AP this in the morning, they just have their AP online because I'm going to go into medicine if I take AP Bio or something like that. Yeah. That course that we saw that they, you know, over there with the medical course, mm -hmm. that would be great because then going into yeah. nursing, or, I have that basis. Yeah, absolutely. That I mean, you That's were getting. We get the higher level, the high academic achievers if they want to go to tech to be able to get them to go through the online program. Right. Yeah. And that's just checking off every box. You have the academic credentials, you have the hands-on credentials, you have the people skills necessary. It's incredible, I think. Now, I'm going to go off topic a little bit, but at this last football game that the boys played in Cocalico, I'm sorry, but the coach actually went back to an alumni who is an NFL professional football player for the Tennessee Titans and asked him to come into the locker room to do the pregame speech, and this Daniel Boone, um, high school graduate, who is now playing in the pros as an NFL player, came into the locker room and then not only stood on the sidelines to support that team that night. So we do have people wow. that are, you know, influential mm -hmm. with our kids because there's no one, you know, that can rise to the occasion more than, you know, people that are in music yeah. or or sports that can, you know, get a kid. So. We just need to get a hold of somebody that. I had no idea that we had a Daniel Boone graduate playing wow. in the NFL. Yeah. Wow. For the Tennessee Titans, and I don't recall his name. Um, I can get that information for you, but he was just a 2009. Wow. wow. 2000. I think it was around nine, eight, or nine. I'd have to go back to Michelle hmm. Goss, but yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, is there anything else in the marketing front? Okay, I felt like I had something, but I, I lost it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I took it right back. No, it's fine. Um, Win program at elementary schools. This? Okay, thank you. See you later. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too. Um, I just thought it would be a good idea to share some of the good things we're doing at the elementary schools oh, yeah. as well with you all. And I don't know if you have, have any of you heard of the WIND program that we have at the elementary schools? I haven't, but I was going to ask what you What's the acronym? WIND is an acronym for what I need. And so uh, what we've done, and we actually began this at Monocacy and Birdsboro Elementary Schools a few years ago. And what we've done is we are looking at how students are responding to our instruction. And then we're put, we put another layer of support in place so that we have another, it's about a half hour layer of instruction that is geared to meet the needs of individual learners. So for instance, let's, we use WIN for reading. So um, we have an extra layer of support for kids who need whether they need remediation, because through our assessments we found that they're struggling, then they get the remediation that they need or the help that they need with, a, let's say, a skill deficit, um, whether it's phonics or comprehension, that type of thing. And at the same time, we aren't just helping the struggling learners, we've set aside time and a place for students who are advanced learners so that they're also getting enriched. So that's been um, something that's been very successful and we are doing that at each of the elementary schools. But how, is that, how does that specifically work then? It's a 45 minute class period. It's about, a, it's about more like a half hour. So of that half hour, we're actually doing what kind of like differentiated learning, I guess? It is the, the whole, the entire half hour 
is differentiated. So you have what we call, what we refer to as our core instruction, which is the instruction that every student receives in the classroom. And then on top of that, we use our assessments to determine how the kids are responding to instruction. And so we always have kids who are struggling, and then we also have kids who are at the other end of the spectrum right, ready to go. and really benefit from So how, but how are you doing that all in one class? I just went through this, this, I just had my conference with my daughter, and what it is is instead of being in their homeroom, their base class, they split them up into every first, like Chloe's in first grade. So everybody in first grade, Chloe will go to Mrs. Jarrett instead of Mrs. Clouser. or this uh, one, like they differentiate in each okay. person. Because I said, and how that's many group, and of, they switch them that way. Mm -hmm. The, the fact that we switch. went to these education centers, that we can mm -hmm. provide that? Pardon me? Is that yeah. because we went to these education it's centers? More, we have, um, more first we have a full panel of first grade. We might we might yeah. have more opportunities, but we have done it before. We, we did, did it at Birdsboro okay. and at Monocacy. Mm -hmm. And this year we're uh, using that model at Amity as well. So do the kids kind of get down themselves who aren't in like, you know, group, Mrs. Jones's group, do they yeah, know they're in the dumb reading class? Or no, it, it's not, not like that. The they're very flexible, flexible really as a matter of fact, about every six weeks, well, even oh. sooner than that, they monitor they their progress the and then they regroup. Oh, cool. So they're very flexible and Good. fluid. Um, and the kids don't, I don't they're, they're they recognize that, that level. you know, they're, they're the struggling. Well, eventually they do, but. So you're seeing that, you're, you can quantify that that is working because you're seeing those skills, deficits being. Well, I happen to think that's. that's Attributed to, yeah. One of the reasons that Birdsboro had such. Definitely. Experienced such gains in their. And their school performance profile because, and, and really the outlier would be Amity. They were doing it with the same um, intensity that the other two elementary schools were and we saw the complete opposite happen. So, um, yeah. And that study island that's identifying the deficits, did you say? Uh, it depends for different grades. We do use different assessments. We use dibbles, we use okay. um, study island. It just depends okay. on the grade. Right, right. Okay. So we typically Thank use, we typically use uh, what we refer to as universal screeners, where we screen all the students at the beginning of the year, and then mid-year, and then at the end of the year. Great. Good stuff. Yeah. That's Sylvanish. Sylvan Learning Company. We sort of did the same thing with I'm them. not really familiar with it, but that's um, really what it is is a component to multi tiered system of supports that many of the schools are using. Well it seems kind of complicated, I don't know. It seems like really uh, there's a lot of, I guess, I don't know if it was that way when I was in school and I just didn't pick up on it. I probably didn't pick I up on it. it. But it seems like a lot of improvements, or at least, it seems like it's becoming almost more scientific. It is. Okay. It, that's a great word for it. It's very, it's much more scientific. Teachers are really using data to guide their instruction. And uh, I just think it's fascinating yeah. to sit with a group of teachers, let's say six teachers, on a grade level where they're really looking at. Uh, their assessment data and they're talking about how their kids are responding to instruction. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible that you can get, I don't want to say that instant feedback, but you can see, like, this is working or this isn't. And, but to take that and take it t down to every student, that is a challenge. Um, so I guess it's where our staff is doing, like, that's great stuff. Right. Right. Um, but I do have a quick question on the elementary schools. I'm not sure if anybody around the table would know, but I know Mr. Miller had reached out to um, the, uh, I think her name is Mrs. Googe in Wales. Mm -hmm. Has there been any movement on that? I believe so. I think there was some more correspondence. I don't know if they started the Skype, but I know that there's been definitely some type of dialogue. Okay, good. Yeah. I'll reach out to him and ask. Yeah, I'm, I, I think that there was something that had come across and that they were moving forward. So. And there's something else to include in this stuff about building up Daniel Boone uh, in the eyes of the community. Or, I mean, we're bridging yeah. an ocean. So, <laughs> all right, great. Anything else on the WIND program? Well, thank you for that overview. If, if anyone is interested in learning anything more about it, I'd be happy to meet with them. All right, thank you. Classroom walkthroughs. Uh, classroom walkthroughs uh, is something new that we've used, well, for the past few years. But um, 
in addition to our supervision of staff through the teacher effectiveness and the whole Act AB2, um, that is a compliance component, as you know, in the state. And we've developed our own little checklist so that we are going, administrators are going into classrooms on a frequent basis and they're looking for certain things. So I just thought you might be interested in the checklist that we've created and we're currently using. Um, and this is what we are looking for when we go into classrooms. Oh, I would have bought it. So I know that one of Mrs. Torsh's goals was, and of course all of our goals, is to um, increase the effective research-based instructional strategies that teachers are using, and this is one way that we are making sure that that's happening. Great. So we are getting into classrooms on a regular basis. Do you have to and give them advance notice that, that you're going in? No, these are never, you never get notice of these. So, so you could walk in after class started, so it's not staged for, for your no, visit? You're, as a matter of fact, these are five to ten minute visits. So you're just getting a snapshot. Right. But yeah. it is a good way to gauge um, if teachers are implementing things that, you know, just to see if things are happening that you are expecting to happen. Yes. Great. On a random basis. Yes. Speaking of walkthroughs, I do have a question, kind of an idea. Um, would it be possible, maybe in December, mid-December, maybe the week of the 15th specifically, <laughs> uh, for maybe members of the board or specifically this committee to visit our schools and walk through maybe with the principal and the principal could highlight what's going on. Um, we could maybe stop into and just witness for a few seconds in the classrooms just to see, like to be in the schools. I think that's a there's a value there in recognizing what's going on inside the actual buildings that we don't always recognize sitting in this room. I would like that to see, to become part of our annual calendar and time it with when we might have new board members. Yeah. So, so that we're not, when it's part of the orientation mm -hmm. last year, we went, we did mm -hmm. our walkthroughs so that this, they'd be scheduled and not coming at all times. Yeah, I think it would be good because for, for we remember. To revisit. Yeah, it keeps it fresh in our mind what we're here for. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll put it around board appreciation because then that would be kind of the, the holding place. That's always the, the last, um, the voting meeting in January. That's typically like um, board, school board appreciation week, month, whatever. I don't want this to be about the board. I, I, no, no, no. What Connor's getting at is Connor may be away that week, but I'll be home the week. Right, the and and honestly, Connor, I mean, anyone yeah, individual. Yeah. If you, schedule. yeah, if you, and I think. I don't want to take up. I don't want to have nine individuals taking up the time right. of all these principals. That's I think if you if you want to come in and you want to have um, yeah. an experience, yeah. we can certainly send you to any of the school. I think that if you want to get to something specifically at the high school, I think we would be better off. Um, pairing you up with the department head than with the principal because they know you know more about what's going on specifically within their department. Not that the principal doesn't, yeah. but the day-to-day -day ongoings where they're at in their curriculum, you know what you know specific. It's more things. diversified than right. the elementary. Level. Right, it, it, it's a, a, a different type of um, place. Mr. Hurley, who's well versed at the middle school, could gladly take you around, and I'm sure he could. You know that that way, then you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about yeah. tying up the principal who may be involved in. Um, discipline or anything like that, but and then at the elementary level, myself or Mrs. Kiesel. Great. You know. I think that I think yeah. witnessing. I think the what you need to do is go get a book for the elementary level. Talk to your mom about it because she'll be able to give you some good advice. Go into book. a classroom and get involved. Don't just watch. Get involved. All right. You know, and we love having extra hands, as I told Mr. Martino, mm -hmm. around the holidays. There is so much going on in those classrooms. And, you know, and, and I don't want to discount the high school level because yeah, we do try to keep. Like, our schools yeah. are crazy. Right. right. We try to. Because like, there's keystone yeah, testing. There's all sorts of stuff okay. there. But at the elementary and the middle level, there's fun, cutesy yeah. things going on, you know. Well, um, when you go to the high school, you can talk to your little sister. Okay, well, this isn't about me, and it's not, but would the committee, would the other members of the committee be interested 
maybe as a little group going around and mm -hmm. and just witnessing and participating maybe yeah. i don't want to i don't I mean, want to interfere that's what i don't want i to think do. i think it would be a better experience than you all going as like a committee going and going as as individuals and set it up and i have no problem with that i mean the principals are so welcoming to have people come in you're no different than any other community yeah. member and you want to get a feel for mm -hmm. all right i remember elementary school it was kind of cool but now i'd like to look at mm -hmm. it as an adult mm -hmm. and you just get a different well, perspective you set that up mm -hmm. for for me to right. So, you know, if you if you're if you're home and you need stuff to do, we will we will put okay, you to work. Okay, again, this isn't about me, but I think it would be good for for any board member. I I'd like to take advantage of yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You could hop the school bus with your little sister one day. No, I couldn't do that. That would be in violation of a I lot of policy. I'm sure it would. Be. And we know that because we have a policy committee I, coming up yeah. soon. <laughs> but on that note, does anybody else have anything for curriculum? Yeah. All right. I, I, not, not for tonight, but for future meetings. I, I do have one question for tonight. What was what was the reasoning behind eliminating driver's ed? Well, number one, it's not a requirement with um, the PA school code. You don't have to offer it. And it was one of those things where when we were looking at what could we take away and save money financially that wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't, is in program that's required, it was one of the things that could so, be. I think I had a really good reason for that when I came up before. Like taking it away? Yeah, it, it made sense because I questioned it right at the get go. Um, well, we don't because have the manual is available online. Just... Well, the manual is available online. Yeah, did, we no longer me, offer the driving piece of it, which is the is the, was the huger part of right. it. They're not offering the hands on, and you can still purchase it through and, the CIU if you want to. And even and, and pick you up there and drop you off there. Right, it's students still get a break from their insurance on um, from their insurance, which used to be the big piece that people would stay, you know, were concerned mm -hmm. about. Um, as long as they have, they show that they're a solid student. If you have good grades, like my son had yeah. all A's and B's when he went for his driver's test, and when we went to put him on our insurance, we still got the the student discount, same Without as if you would have taken. Right, right, wow. right. Yeah, right. You get a discount. There's three classes. I can't. I can tell right. you Pardon? We can't staff it with our current staff. Right. That so we wouldn't we be just able to. Like, we just can't. I was just curious how much. We cut it for you know. Sometimes when we get off the record, I can sometimes tell you how private. Okay. Right. For future meetings, not for tonight. Um, we had we had a long discussion a year ago. Mrs. Weiss and I did a little extra research on block scheduling, mm -hmm. and then it sort of fell by the wayside. And, and I think we need to have a discussion soon on: Are we going to just just can it? Or are we going to look into it more? Um, we had started to talk about clubs, official clubs, unofficial clubs, the cost of clubs, and, and I, I think that needs to be a discussion. Connor touched on study halls tonight. I, I would like to get into that again soon. And something that somebody else had brought up when Connors had his Honors 2.0 discussion, but I think I'd like to have a discussion at some point on do we really need four divisions of, of curriculum, regular accelerated honors in AP? Do we really need all four of those breakdowns? And we'll be able to give you a better um, answer, but I can give you a, a little bit of a recap or a, a, an explanation for that. In the areas where we do have the four levels, it is necessary because of that in-between learner. I, I, I know we'd like to push them along, but they become frustrated. And I think you might be able to speak a little bit more to it because I know it, it was something that you had with Algebra 1. Don't do it too yeah. much. But, but I think we can, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have, the, we have a population that we can facilitate it, and it, it's good for kids to need to have the Okay, I, I think the only thing that I think had been discussed was could there be a, a fifth group that needs something and a sixth group that needs something and, and can we accommodate everyone? But, so if, if, if the committees stay in place or stay similar, you know, I, I, I'd like these things in some 
future meeting to be discussed. Sure. What I've been doing in terms of the agenda is really handing it over to Mrs. Um, Mrs. Kiesel and Mrs. Torsha to put together. So I mean, if you guys want to come up with the time to discuss that, that would be great. Um, but yeah, we'll, we can include those as long as administration is up for it. Is there anything else on the agenda? Well, not on the agenda, but anything else in anybody's mm -hmm. mind? So, let me just clarify for selection so I go back with my staff, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's good for us, It's too. gonna go, it's gonna come up on the board for December 2nd, the Committee of the Whole meeting, yes. correct? And then before then, I will clean up the numbers. You want everything to be lettered, grade based, yes, correct? correct. So I'll do that, I'll get that to you um, first thing next week. And then it'll go before the board and we'll hopefully get approval by December. Yes, yeah, so and if there's any well, other change, it'll be on the board make. December 2nd for discussion. For discussion, for the vote on the 15th for approval. Does yeah. that fit your time frame? Yes, because then I can start, I can schedule my eighth grade parent meeting January. I can open course selection, I can train my teachers. Yeah. I think it's a lot, lot better than last year, weren't it? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 Last year we didn't schedule, and, and we're, I've been working with the IU and going to training um, and working with our guidance department that we are hoping to take what was a three or four month process nice. and make it a six to eight week process. My hope is that our students have made their course selections um, and requests by March so that I can start working on the master schedule April, May, and June while the teachers are still there be able to have all of those pieces in place so the teachers know what they're teaching, we know where our numbers are. Mm -hmm. Everything's gonna change a little bit at the end once they're final grades, there's always a little bit of shift. Um, but I wanna be able to work on the master when I have the teachers there and be able to have the conversation, discussion, and analysis. All, all, all your jobs will be a lot more stable this year. You won't be, be going into March wondering, are we having kindergarten or yeah. not? Yeah. And on that note, I also wanna say how much I appreciate you all coming to these meetings. You're here at all our curriculum meetings, you're at our board meetings. Our, our, we are more effective as a board because the expertise is here. And I think we can move things along because you're sitting there and you're saying, I need this by then. And, mm -hmm. and as I, I just think it's, we're really clicking as a team. And I, I'm personally so gratified to be working with, with you people who are so generous and not seem a bit resentful about you know, giving up another evening at home. Yeah, and, uh, and thank you for that too, especially. Truly, for truly grateful to Mrs. Torsha, obviously for facilitating it, but for you guys for being here. I'm just yeah. really thrilled at how productive we can be. And we'd have to say thank you because we're thrilled too. We're thrilled that we're given the um, the ability to, you know, ex bring our ideas to the group, to get the support that we do get from the group. We love the cohesive um, working relationship that we have. Um, you know, everybody's here. Just we're just we're just really happy to working to be working together. We're it's just been great. It's been a great experience from day one. Um, I don't want to put words does, in all of your mouths, but it works um, in committees. I mean, yeah. We're productive at board meetings because we're working yeah. in committees, and you guys are here. We don't yeah. have to wait for. Mrs. Torsha, no. to get back to us. Not, no. that, not that you don't usually have the information, but you guys being here mm -hmm. well, is so it all, invaluable. It all goes back to none of us is as smart as all of us. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. agreed. Yeah, it's been good. So. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, adjourn the meeting then now at 6.43 p.m. Thank you.